Resident Evil 3 is back from the dead and has finally shambled onto our systems. And by the looks of it, gamers are kind of disappointed. <laughs> While it plays well and looks absolutely incredible, Remake 3 is not quite the breath of fresh air Remake 2 was. And unfortunately saw Capcom return to some gameplay design fans thought they saw the last of. Nevertheless, with the Remake trilogy now complete, Resi fans can't help but ask, what's next? What's in store for the Resident Evil franchise? Is Resident Evil 8 around the corner? Does it take place in a village? And are there more remakes coming in the future? Is Resident Evil 4 the next to get reimagined, or is there another title more deserving? We will be discussing all of this and more. Also, make sure you stick around towards the end for more triggering speculation. Let's begin. Okay, so Resident Evil 8 might as well be a faucet because it's been leaking like crazy in the last few weeks. A lot of these leaks have come out of the supposed Resident Evil Ambassador or testing program where Capcom has apparently been demoing the game. And the leaker is an alleged Capcom insider that goes by Dusk Golem. Now obviously take all of this with a grain of salt. Alright, so let's go through the bullet points of these leaks and break things down as we go. First of all, the name of the game is Resident Evil Village, with the V-I-L-L -L in Village stylized to look like a Roman numeral 8, much like the 7 in Resident Evil 7. Apparently, the game initially started out as Resident Evil Revelations 3 before Capcom decided to turn it into a mainline entry. The game will take place in Europe in the snowy mountains within you guessed it, a village. Not unlike the one seen in Resident Evil 4. It will be first person again, which is a good thing. I think the first person view in RE7 was a successful experiment and a smart way to restrict the player's view like the old games, but in a fresh modern style. Also, like RE7, the game will support PSVR, which isn't that big of a surprise, but considering Resident Evil 8 is supposedly going to be releasing on both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, this might be a hint that Sony is moving forward with VR on their fifth console. Not necessarily a huge revelation, but it's still fun to hear. The themes of the game will largely focus on the occult and witchcraft. The main character will once again be Ethan, which I'm a little surprised about. There's nothing wrong with Ethan necessarily, but he's a hair on the basic side when it comes to RE protagonists. But apparently 8 is going to make him a little more rugged and hardened, not unlike Ash from the Evil Dead series. Evil Dead, of course, being a main inspiration for the franchise as a whole. Story-wise, the game sees Ethan and his wife Mia, who is now pregnant, living in this supposed village when some sort of viral outbreak occurs. Shocker. This causes the newly formed Blue Umbrella to come and contain the situation, not unlike the ending of Resident Evil 7. This is also what brings series regular Chris Redfield into the fray, who will be a much bigger part of the game, possibly acting as a mentor to Ethan. Supposedly, Chris will also have a new design overhaul. I'm gonna go ahead and guess they're gonna give him a big old bushy beard. Cause why not? He'd look good with a big old bushy beard. Hopefully, we'll see other series veterans make an appearance as well. My big hope is that the game involves more of the larger Resident Evil universe on the whole, much like how Resident Evil 4 was a side story to help set up the larger events of Resident Evil 5 and 6, Resident Evil 7 could be acting in a similar way, especially with its Not a Hero DLC, establishing that there is a mysterious organization supposedly continuing Umbrella's work. We see this at the beginning with Lucas Baker talking to someone he refers to as the f***ing company. We've got work to do. <laughs> this is also followed up in the ending after Chris explodes Lucas and halts a file transfer to said mysterious company. Resident Evil 3 Remake echoes this as well, with Nikolai working for some third party to undermine Umbrella, which is notable since it was not featured in the original game. If I die, you'll never find out the truth. I don't mind a little detective work. There's some big narrative dominoes set up for this game, and how they fall over is really anybody's guess. And you know, there's always a chance Evelyn could still be alive and kicking in some form or another. Then he can die. The inventory system might ditch the classic style and bring back the Tetris-like attaché case from Resident Evil 4, which I wouldn't mind seeing again. The attaché case was always its own little mini-game and added a different sort of challenge to inventory management. Finally, the enemies seem to be all over the place. There might be zombies and something to do with hallucinations, maybe a callback to the Hookman from the Resident Evil 4 prototype. 
There will also be a stalker type character, not unlike Mr. X or the Nemesis that will torment the player throughout the game. The name of this baddie might be The Witch which is in line with the game's occult themes. We did get a taste of this in RE7 with Mama Baker and Papa Baker always on the hunt for you, so it makes sense for Resident Evil 8 to expand on this. The witch might also have bugs be a big aspect of her character, perhaps like Mama Baker in RE7. Also, there might be werewolves. Yep werewolves. This has definitely been raising some eyebrows as Silver Bullets, The Full Moon, and Benicio Del Toro don't seem totally in line with Resident Evil. But let's take a second and think about this. Pretty much all of Resident Evil is about science dudes taking a crazy virus, injecting it into a random thing, and seeing what happens. So, virus, human, zombie, virus, frog, hunter, virus, spider, big ass spider, and so on and so on. So, when I hear Resident Evil is going to have werewolves, my first thoughts are, clearly some science dudes were messing around with wolves. Yeah man, they're probably mutated wolves, or perhaps humans that mutated into something with wolf-like properties. The way they are presented might draw on classic werewolf archetypes and mythos, but their explanation will likely be grounded firmly in the usual rules of Resident Evil. It makes me wonder though if transformation is going to play a big part in the game. Now obviously all of Resident Evil is about things transforming into other things, and a lot of the horror of werewolves centers on transforming into a beast you can't control. I wonder if this will be reflected in the gameplay. There's only a couple games in the Resi series that deal with transformation as a mechanic. The Crimson Heads in Remake 1 and the Plagas in the action titles. What if these werewolves only transform at certain times in the game? Or what if the player is able to accidentally trigger a transformation, much like spawning Plagas after getting a headshot? Wait, 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 wait. What if, assuming these werewolves are from human hosts, a main character contracts the virus and you have to deal with it? So let's say Chris ends up contracting it, and at certain times of the game, your friend and mentor turns into a ravenous beast trying to kill you, and you have to either get away or put him down until he can safely change back. Or what if it's the other way around, and it's Ethan that transforms into the beast, putting the player control into Chris, who has to find a way to pacify Ethan and until he is able to change back, adding a totally unseen dynamic to a Resident Evil game. Okay, I'm probably letting my imagination run away from me a little bit, but at this point, it seems like anything is possible for this new Resident Evil. Where? Where am I? Okay, so the future of the series, we know, or at least have an idea of what to expect. But what more is coming from Resident Evil's past? <laughs> Remakes are becoming quite the pillar of the Resident Evil franchise, and it's likely we'll see another in the not-too-distant future. A rumor, or rather another leak, circulated only a few days ago that Capcom's newest studio, M2, is currently working on the next Resident Evil remake, slated for 2022. And there's good chance it might be Resident Evil 4. M2 was founded by former Platinum Games CEO Tetsuya Minami, I definitely butchered that, and played a key role in Resident Evil 3's development, for what it's worth. From a business standpoint, remaking 4 does make a lot of sense. Resident Evil 4 is one of the most influential games of all time and one of the most successful entries in the series. And seeing as how we are in this neat little renaissance of amazing video game remakes, it's not hard to imagine Capcom is eager to get us buying this one all over again. However, imagining how the end product will turn out is pretty hard to fathom. Obviously, a lot can be done to update the presentation, make the graphics shinier, and hopefully make Leon less of a douche nozzle. Somehow, I thought thought you'd be a little older. But gameplay wise, I'm not super sure what could be done to improve Resident Evil 4. This game still holds up incredibly well even 15 years after release. See, with the classic Resident Evil trilogy, those games, while fantastic, served to benefit quite a deal from a remake. And when they were remade, their core mechanics were the same ones that Resident Evil 4 introduced in the first place. Plus, while Resident Evil 4 is still very much a beloved game, it is generally looked upon as the game that thrust the series into the more action-heavy direction, a direction generally despised by fans. So would Remake 4 stick to its guns and remain true to its action-heavy self, or maybe try to inject more survival horror elements into it? And if they did that, would the RE4 purists reject this remake outright? It, it all seems kind of messy. Now, I can see a reality where Capcom keeps the game exactly as it is and just overhauls the graphics, and I can see fans generally being happy about that. I guess it would very much be a shadow of the Colossus 
Colossus situation. But man, the funnest part about the Resident Evil remakes is seeing how Capcom has updated and remixed the formula. If a one-to-one -one remake of RE4 happened, wouldn't it feel a little pointless at the end of the day? Once again, I guess we'll just have to settle on waiting to see what Capcom does. They've surprised us before, hopefully they'll surprise us again. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Now, when it comes to remakes, there is one game in the franchise that I think fans want reimagined far more than Resident Evil 4, a game that actually would benefit from a remake. Code Veronica, Resident Evil's most important side game. Originally meant to be Resident Evil 3, Code Veronica was the series' first foray into 3D. On the Dreamcast, no less. The most spectacular bummer of consoles. Now, some of you might already be aware that part of Dust Golem's big Resident Evil leak was saying that currently a Code Veronica remake is not being developed by Capcom. But that's not to say it couldn't happen. If enough demand comes their way, I'm sure they could get revved up for a Code Veronica remake. It was considered a respectable next step for the series, diving deep into the Resident Evil mythos and respectably updating the formula for what were then next-gen consoles. It also set up future events in the series, particularly the next phase of Wesker's saga. But uh, has anybody played it recently? Because it has not held up well. Graphically, the game is extremely dated. The gameplay is awkward, even by classic tank control standards. The enemies aren't very scary, and it's so, so goofy. Father! It's begging to be reimagined, and I think it could turn out pretty amazing. I mean, for starters, the game takes place on a prison island. This was something not taken advantage of fully in the original. In a remake, though, one could imagine it being like Resident Evil set in Alcatraz. Plus, the Ashford twins, who by today's standards are rather cartoonish and goofy, could be reinterpreted as something rather disturbing and, dare I say, spine-tingling. I mean, there is all sorts of juicy psychological dysfunction going on here, folks. And it would be fun to see the Redfield siblings back together with their recently updated looks. Alas, I guess we'll just have to wait and see once again, because even if something like this were to happen, it probably won't happen for some time. I mean, the cold truth of it all is that Resident Evil 4 has been released on many consoles, sold consistently, and is loved by most of the Resi community. Code Veronica simply doesn't have the same exposure and love, and thus won't be as high of a priority. And I hate to say it, folks, but there is one one other Resident Evil title that I could easily see being remade well before Code Veronica. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. Now, there's probably some of you watching this going, no, 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 that's not going to happen. And I'm right there with you. I mean, Remake 1 is about as perfect as a Resident Evil can get in terms of the classic gameplay. However, if I had any way to back up Resi 1 being remade a second time, it's the same reason Resi 4 is being remade. It's all about the money. Hear me out. There are two big reasons why Resident Evil has returned to its survival horror roots as seen in RE7 and Remake 2. The first is the mediocre critical reception of Resident Evil 6, and the second is the huge success of Resident Evil Remake Remaster. Oof, too many R's. When Remake Remaster was released, it broke day one sales records on the PSN and was the fastest selling digital game in Capcom's history. Pretty amazing considering the GameCube original was a sales disappointment and was a prime reason Resi went so action heavy. Funny how stuff works, right? So, from a strictly business standpoint, remaking RE1 again would probably be a pretty safe bet. I mean, if they're remaking 4, then why the hell not? Although, let's be honest here, Remake 1 is still a fantastic looking and playing game, but it's almost 20 years old. Yes, that's right, 20. There's definitely stuff in it that hasn't aged very well, and within the Remake trilogy, it's kind of the odd man out. What is it? Look out! It's a monster! Let me take care of it! And gameplay-wise, there is room for improvement. For starters, all the improvements present in Remake 2 and 3, obviously, but what if you made the mansion bigger, not for the sake of padding the game out, but to actually differentiate Jill and Chris's campaigns? What if Chris had specific areas for him and Jill had specific areas for her, with the main sections of the mansion shared by both? And then naturally, the actions of one campaign could affect the other. This was something Resident Evil 2 did an okay job of, and disappointingly, something Remake 2 didn't really take more advantage of. Also, Lisa Trevor, 
This tragic monstrosity was a great addition to Remake 1, but you only really interact with her in a few key sections. Her role in the game could be redesigned so she serves as more of a pursuer type enemy, much like Mr. X and Nemesis. And lastly, can you imagine how terrifying a crimson head would be if they could freely roam around the mansion? Think about that for a second. Either way, my friends, more remakes are coming and hopefully Capcom is paying attention to some of the feedback for Resident Evil 3 so they can avoid some of the mistakes in that game. No! Don't go! Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to take a minute to talk about another Capcom franchise that I think would be a pretty good candidate to receive the remake treatment. A sister series to Resident Evil, if you will, that shares much of its creative DNA. Let's rock, baby. Yes indeed, Devil May Cry. A rejected prototype for Resident Evil 4 spun off to be its own influential series of stylish action and bad voice acting. Even as a child, I had powers. There's demonic blood in me. Love it. Now, I will admit, I don't have much to really back this up other than just my own intuition and hopeful thinking. Sadly, the current director of the series, Hideki Utsuno, has stated that while he thinks a remake would be interesting, he's more focused on working on Devil May Cry 6, which I'm sure is in active development. However, the series' original director, Hideki Kamiya, has expressed a lot of interest in remaking the original game, going so far as to actually pitch it on Twitter to Capcom. Now, obviously, Kamiya is currently at Platinum Games, and who knows what they are working on right now. Hopefully near 3. And there's also the question of whether Capcom would want to give one of their flagship franchises to an outside studio. Again. But it's pretty interesting that the former CEO of Platinum Games, who has had previous experience with the Devil May Cry franchise, just opened up a new studio for Capcom that is handling remakes. Who's to say? I think the conditions are there, but I'm no dust golem. I'm no insider. I'm just a gamer with a big imagination. It would be crazy though if Hideki Kamiya did remake Devil May Cry and it was successful enough to greenlight another remake, which likely would be Devil May Cry 3. But what if Kamiya got to take a crack at remaking the trash fire that is Devil May Cry 2 and actually salvaged it? Nah, nah, that might be too crazy. Yeah, too crazy. But what do you guys think? What do you want to see Capcom do next? More Resident Evil titles? Another take at Devil May Cry? Or is there something I didn't mention that you would like to see? Be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. I also post videos weekly, so hit that bell so you are the first to know. Anyways, I'm Kirk and thank you for watching this video.